Wanna build your own crypto trading bot or maybe just test your strategies in real time without losing money? In this video I'm going to show you something powerful. How to set up Binance Testnet with Python where you can simulate real trades risk free and start building your own trading bots. No complicated setup, no advanced coding, just a simple step by step process to get you started. And here's the best part, you can start trading in minutes. All right, let's get started. You go on this site, I will link it in the video description. Then you need to be logged into your GitHub account. If you don't have a GitHub account, just set one up. It literally takes less than one minute. If you are not logged in or don't have one, you will have something like login to GitHub here. After you have logged in to GitHub, this will pop up and you just click on the first one, generate HMAC key. Give it a name, so let's just call it test, generate it, and then you will see your API key and your API secret, which as the warning is indicating, will never be shown again after that. So store it somewhere, I directly store it in our notebook here. So I'm just giving it a name, store it as a string, API key, and same story for the API secret key here. So API underscore secret is that one. So we got our API key and our API secret. So let's also import some necessary libraries. We only need from Binance client, client and also time. This one important information here, you need the Python Binance library in order for this to work. So be sure you have installed that beforehand. Time library, we just need to utilize some handy functions like uh, pausing uh, endless while loop, for instance, but you will see in the course of the video where I will utilize it. So we have everything we need to instantiate client, which is variable which we are using to access all kinds of utilities from the Python Binance library. In order for that to work, we need to instantiate client, provide our API key and our API secret. And then very important, you provide testnet equals true to indicate that you're working on the testnet and not in your real Binance account here. So with that, we have instantiated the client and are able to operate in the testnet. So first things first, what everyone wants to know, how much back do I have? So how much is my balance? So just use client.getAccount and then you're getting an overview of what they are giving you in terms of fake assets here. So for instance, you're getting one ETH, one Bitcoin, seven Litecoin isn't life good. And you even get 10K USDT. So be invited to play around with that, check out what you're getting here. Uh, but in a nutshell, you're just getting a bunch of fake Bitcoin money, both in terms of coin money and in terms of stablecoin money here. Now let's set up a simple trading bot and let's just use the most straightforward logic. So we just want to buy, so place a market buy order when our current price, let's just take Bitcoin is below a certain threshold. And we want to sell if the price is above a certain threshold, all right? So this is the logic of the trading bot. So first of all, let's define some variables. First, the symbol we want to trade, which is Bitcoin in relation to USDT. Then we need a buy price threshold, which is just, let's just take 60K. And then same for the sell price thresholds. Let's just take 68K here. And then we wanna 
also define a trade quantity that is how many Bitcoin we want to buy and I just want to buy 0.001 Bitcoin. So these are my variables I'm predefining. So again, just the symbol I'm interested to trade, then a buying and a selling threshold and then the amount I want to buy and sell. Next up, utility functions for the trading bot. First, most obvious and most important function is a function which is pulling the current Bitcoin price in order for this trading bot to work. So let's define a function, get current price for the given symbol, in our case Bitcoin, but you can play around with all other symbols you're interested in. And then we just define ticker, use client, get symbol, ticker and provide our symbol. Then this function should just return the price of that ticker. And I'm also doing a float conversion here as it's coming as a string uh, type from the API. So I'm just providing ticker price here. And this function, super simple, is just pulling the most recent Bitcoin price. So if I'm calling that, you see I'm getting 60 3k roughly. So if I'm executing that again in some seconds, this price will change as this is always the most recent price here. So just let's just test it. Now it's 63188.63 if I'm calling that again. As you see, this is changing. This is an important function, but the next important one is still outstanding, which is a function organizing my orders. And we are starting with our buying orders. So I'm just calling that place buy order. Also takes a symbol and a quantity as it needs to know how many of those coins we want to buy. And then just define the order here, use client order. And then as I said, we're using a market buy order. There are many other order types such as e.g. limit orders. We are keeping it simple. We're just placing a market buy order. Provide the symbol as symbol and the quantity as the provided quantity. And then also we want to have a feedback, something like buy order done, and then just print out uh, the order and the execution, how it went through and some information for what price and so on. So we can actually test that. I mean, it's fake money anyways. So let's just place it by order that you are getting an understanding of how this is how this working. So if we just buy Bitcoin and actually uh, buy 0 0.001. So place by order we can also just provide trade quantity as we have defined that above here. So if we place that, we are getting buy order done, then symbol BTC USDT. And then you see status filled, you get the price where this order was executed for then the quantity. Uh, and also you're getting the, the USDT equivalent. So you bought for 63 USDT. And if you pull your balance now, you should have 0.001 more Bitcoin in your balance. So let's go above here. So you see we had uh, one Bitcoin here. And if you pull your account now, you will see that you have 0. Uh, 1.001 Bitcoin here and a bit less USDT, namely exactly the quantity I just pulled over. So just that, that you see, how this is uh, connecting here. Next up, selling order. Just copy paste all that kind of stuff. So place the sell order. Same arguments here, just some slight renamings. So client order market sell and then sell order done obviously. So that's already it for defining a selling order and now Let's just sell whatever we just bought. So Bitcoin and then again 0 0.001 and see what we are getting. So let's execute the sell order. Just 
uh, sell the Bitcoin we just bought again. So we are getting a feedback, sell order done, and then Bitcoin USDT for that price and that quantity. So again, just to make that really clear, if you pull your account now again, you will see that you have one Bitcoin again now and roughly 10K in your USDT wallet again. So you sold the asset again. So very nice. We have a price pull. We have a buying order system, which is working and a selling order system, which is working. And now we just need to set up a trading bot logic here. All right. Just to give you some, some, some side notes here. This is all working currently, but if you are building a more dedicated bot, which I also did in some of my previous videos, you have to take care of way more things if you intend to trade something else than for instance, Bitcoin. So smaller coins, trash coins, light coins, or uh, cheaper coins or hyped coins, whatever you want to call them. You also need to be sure that you buy a certain minima, minimal notional value. You only go in certain step sizes uh, and you need to have a function taken care of that you actually buy a sufficient amount of the assets. So just that you've heard it, this is something you have to take care of. We can do that in future videos, no worries, no problem. I'm keeping it simple for this video, but this is something you have to take care of if you uh, building something more dedicated. Enough talk. Let's get back into action here. So let's just call it trading bot, which is a function we're going to call. And now it's super straightforward, right? We have a in position flag, which is checking, are we actually in a position? And obviously if you're in a position, we check the uh, um, the, 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 the Bitcoin price being above the sell price threshold. If we are not in a position, we check if the price is below the buy price threshold. And we just do that in an endless loop. It doesn't get simpler than that. So you set up an endless loop here. While true, you just pull the Bitcoin price all the time. So store current price and then just call the function from above, which is get current symbol uh, price on symbol. And then uh, you also want to have a feedback here just that you, you're seeing that the loop is actually running. I personally think that's more convenient as getting no feedback at all. So F then current price of and then whatever symbol you are pulling is your current price, right? So in our case, it would just print out current price of bit. bit BTC USDT is whatever your current price is, all right? So with that, you have a current price and then you just check if you're not in a position, if not in position, you check if the current price is below the buy price threshold, threshold. And if that's the case, you can also uh, print out a, a feedback here. So yeah, let's just, let's just do that for the sake of completeness here. So price is below the buy price threshold. So placing by order. And then we just call our function from above place by order. And we provide Bitcoin and the trade quantity. And after that, we are in a position. So we set the in position variable to true. That's it for the buying condition. Super simple. And then just else here. So that is if we are in a position, then we're just checking the uh, uh, sale price logic. I'm just copy pasting and, and rearranging the logics here. So if current price is above the sell price threshold price is is above above the sell price threshold placing sell order then we place a sell order and set the position flag to false again 
All right, and then as this is <laughs> just firing out an endless loop, uh, this is very inconvenient. So let's just uh, wait a certain amount of time before we are getting into the next iteration all the time. So just going to use time sleep and provide any amount you want to wait. So and let's just take three seconds just for presentation purposes, but more sense would probably make if you if you just wait 30 seconds or one minute for the next iteration here. That's already it for the function. So it's not that complicated. So to, to run this bot, you would just pull it off like if name equals main. You pull a trading bot. So trading bot and this will now give you a permanent feedback. So current price of BTC is this. Then after three seconds, you're getting the new price. So you're getting a, a price flow until until the Bitcoin is dropping below 60K, which I cannot, I, I'm not an oracle, but which most probably won't happen today. Uh, so you can wait a long time for that or you just amend the, the threshold, right? If you want to play around. So you just can uh, amend this to 63, 100 or something like that. If you want to ac actually execute trades to to test if that is working. Yeah. And that's already it for this video. So as said, a lot of interesting things to explore here. So do your job, like the video, share it. Let me know what you think, what you're interested in. There's a lot to check out here. And with that being said, I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.